F1 teams fume at Mercedes and Lewis Hamilton, and here's why. So we're going to be going through that in today's video, but before we get into it, I did want to say, guys, make sure you like this video, and don't forget, if you want more F1 content like this, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit that red button down below. Guys, 98% of you are still not subscribed, so it would mean the world if you could subscribe to the channel. But let's get straight into today's story. So Wolf doubles down on Mercedes' pace concerns, saying the gap is just too big. Total Wolf says the gap between Mercedes and Formula 1 pace setters is just too big following a poor Belgian Grand Prix weekend. Now, as you all know, Max Verstappen did very, very well. So while Red Bull dominated the weekend through Max Verstappen, who won qualifying and then recovered from 14th on the grid to win following a grid penalty, Mercedes languished well behind its rivals. And I think this is completely true. It is very upsetting to see Verstappen, who actually started very low on the grid, find his way all the way back to the top and surpassing both Mercedes drivers, George Russell and also Lewis Hamilton. Now, the lead Mercedes in qualifying, Lewis Hamilton was one. 0.8 seconds slower than Verstappen in one lap pace and their race pace a little better but George Russell still finished 30 seconds behind the fourth. Speaking after the race, Wolf was alarmed by the pace deficit given Mercedes high expectations following the Hungarian Grand Prix. Mercedes are now winless in 15 Grand Prix, stretching back to the 2021 Saudi Arabian Grand Prix, their worst winless run since 2012 to 2013. Wolf now believes the team needs to accept the reality of the situation and look towards the W14 and the 2023 season. I don't think you can be satisfied if Max Verstappen being in a league of his own, he explained. We need to really find out how we can improve our cars. The gap is just too big. That's just not the reality. I think we need to accept that, said Wolf when asked about Hamilton's comments earlier in the weekend about the car being difficult. The car is very difficult to drive and hasn't gotten the pace on a single lap, so we just need to continue to work on ourselves out. There will be lots of sticking their heads together, setting the the sides also on not only the next few races but also the next season and I think this really does come at a very difficult time because obviously Mercedes and Lewis Hamilton coming as he is getting older by the day that obviously they want to utilize Lewis Hamilton as much as possible especially with such a great teammate like George Russell. Now, I kind of agree with both sides. Lewis Hamilton had a lot to say about the car. Obviously, I do see where he's coming from. The car just really isn't up to the standard of Red Bull and also Ferrari. However, on top of that, there really isn't anything they can do. So they must look to next year in order to really make an impact. So, you know, actually, Total Wolf continued to say, I hope that a track that would suit us more, we are more competitive, but we mustn't be too much between depression and mania. Today would be all the reason to be depressed, but a hungry three weeks ago, we were thinking, yes, absolutely, we're going to win a race, so we'll never give up. So really is hard to see from both sides because I do see where they're both coming from. Obviously, Hamilton doesn't want to just give up straight away, but when it comes to Total Wolf, there really isn't too much left we can do, and they must focus more on next season rather than trying to do something this season. Now, the Belgian Grand Prix stewards have warned Lewis Hamilton for his apparent initial refusal of medical check following his collision with Fernando Alonso and hinted at stronger penalties if Formula 1 drivers continue to do this. Hamilton's car was sent airborne and landed heavily after contact with Alonso, caused by Hamilton turning in when he tried to pass Alpine around the outside of Les Combes. He was able to continue briefly but stopped the car later around the lap and retired. So, actually seeing it on the TV, at a certain glance, it actually did look like it was actually Alonso's fault, but after further review, you can see that obviously Hamilton did come a little bit too aggressive and came too much on the inside. The impact with the ground was so violent, it triggered the medical warning light, which mandates a check for the driver at the medical center. Race director Niels Wittich reported Hamilton to the stewards for allegedly refusing to visit the medical center until the team was told the further action could be taken if he did not. According to the stewards, this is not the first time this season that drivers, not Hamilton, have initially refused to go for a medical check. They've issued a warning to Hamilton but also taken the opportunity to remind all drivers that stronger action may be taken in the future. Hamilton joked he almost broke his back in the landing but said he did not feel any pain and just expected to feel sore in the morning. So obviously being an athlete, you want to keep going and you want to keep pushing yourself to the absolute limit. Obviously you do have to check when it comes to medically whether they're safe and whether 
whether you know no one is actually hurt so obviously with this whole thing that did happen obviously Lewis Hamilton is a little bit in the limelight when it comes to all of this there obviously is a lot of controversy when it comes to what just happened so Lewis Hamilton has admitted a brutal crash the former teammate Fernando Alonso was his fault during wild scenes at the Belgian Grand Prix so it's great to see that he actually did admit that it was his fault so Max Verstappen continued his F1 dominance and took the checkered flag on Sunday 17.8 seconds ahead of the Mexican teammate Sergio Perez with Spaniard Carlos Sainz a distant third in his Ferrari after starting on pole however with Verstappen so far ahead of the pack plenty of the drama occurred at the beginning of the race Alpine Alonso and Mercedes Hamilton slotted into second and third at the start of the race now, Alonso and Hamilton haven't always shared a warm relation and tension once again hit boiling point at the Les Combes chicane. Hamilton attempted to overtake Alonso but clipped the Spaniard's wheel and ended up airborne for a brief moment. The seven-time world champion landed in front of Alonso before the Spaniard let rip over the team radio. What an idiot, Alonso said to his team, closing the door from the outside. I mean, we have a mega start, but this guy only knows how to drive and start in first. Hamilton ran over the molten rumble strips and attempted to soldier on, but water was pouring out of his terminally wounded machine. The Mercedes driver was ordered by his team to stop. Lewis Hamilton candid response to Fernando Alonso dig. Hamilton returned to his team and said he watched the replay of the incident. The seven-time world champ showed his class and took responsibility for the mistake at the Les Combes chicane. It's definitely my fault. I didn't see him, Hamilton said. I've apologized. He was in my blind spot, so it was unfortunate. The reporter then relayed what Alonso had said to his team after the crash, but Hamilton didn't want to entertain the question. It really doesn't matter what he said. I don't care, Hamilton said. However, more than an hour after the crash, Hamilton addressed Alonso's comments with a cheeky swipe. I know how things go in the heat of the moment, but it's nice to know how he feels about me, and it's better that it's out in the open about how he feels, said Hamilton. I nearly broke my back coming down. I'm grateful to still be alive and in shape. I am sure I will feel sore tomorrow. The incident wasn't intentional. I take responsibility for it. This is what adults do. We move on. Alonso later dismissed the incident as a mistake and agreed with the stewards not to penalize Hamilton. However, many labeled the incident disgraceful while others also slammed Alonso for his comments in the heat of the moment. So guys, if you haven't actually heard what he actually said, you know, it probably is on YouTube, so definitely go check that out. Now, Verstappen, meanwhile, was unstoppable. It's been a weekend I couldn't imagine before, he said, but we want more of them. We'll see them next, what we can do. The win with Verstappen's ninth from 14 races so far this season and put him in a massive 93 points clear of Perez, who moves in second place overall behind his teammate with eight rounds remaining. Ferrari's Charles Leclerc, who started at one place behind Verstappen, Verstappen in 15th, after collecting similar engine and gearbox related grip drops, finished 5th on the road but was demoted to 6th after a penalty for speeding in the pit lane. So obviously that was really upsetting to see for Ferrari but Verstappen did take it home and honestly you gotta respect the way these drivers drive. For George Russell on the other hand, today's Belgian Grand Prix was a textbook case of what might have been after he missed out on the podium finish but nonetheless continued his impressive record of strong finishes in 2022. Now, I do have to say that George Russell has done a very tremendous job this season, you know, despite the fact that his car really isn't up to the pace of Ferrari and also Red Bull. Now, Russell started the Belgian Grand Prix from fifth place, despite a dismal time for Mercedes in qualifying. Thanks to grid penalties for the likes of Max Verstappen, Charles Leclerc, and Lando Norris, warmer temperatures for the race revived Mercedes' fortunes. When the lights went out, Russell actually got ahead of Sergio Perez, who started the race from the front row. But a collision between Russell's teammate Lewis Hamilton and Alpine's Fernando Alonso on the first lap gave Perez the chance to snatch second place back before the safety car was scrambled for Valtteri Bottas' retirement. With the Red Bulls proving too hot for anyone to handle this weekend, Russell was left fighting with Ferrari's Carlos Sainz for the remaining podium positions. Despite a late change on fresher tires than the Spaniard, Russell was unable to catch his rival and had to accept fourth place at the finish line. Much to his annoyance, a little bit of mixed feelings right now, he said after the finish, have you told me last night that I would have been two seconds off the podium on merit on pure pace? I would have probably said, yeah, that's a good recovery. But when I was closing in on signs a second lap, I thought, here we go, we are in a really good shot for here. 
He continued, and then Jessie had two really scrappy laps and got the tires out of the window. Unfortunately, at the moment, tires are the only thing we can ever seem to talk about, he noted. When they are in that sweet spot, the car is transformed, but as soon as I lost it, I knew that it was probably game over. What could have been, who knows? It's fine margins in Formula 1. You've got to be pushing those limits, and the slight mistake probably cost me the podium. But nevertheless, P4, two seconds off the podium, not too bad, he confirmed. While everyone agreed that Red Bull were on an entirely different planet of performance this week, Russell was taking satisfaction in how Mercedes had compared favorably with the Ferrari cars. I need to look into it, but I think definitely today our race pace was probably better than the Ferraris, he said. Carlos started on pole and was leading the first stint, and we closed on him both sides. So yeah, at worst, we were equal with Ferrari today, but as we know, it's swings and roundabouts. But what is clear is that Max is kind of cruising away at the moment. George drove good stints through the race and had better pace than Carlos, confirmed Mercedes chief race engineer Andrew Shovlin. He'd just taken a bit too much of the tires in the final stint to make a pass. We'd hope to move forward here with our updates, and whilst it seems that Ferrari are closer to us on race pace, Red Bull are clearly not. Russell was also left feeling optimistic by how once again Mercedes Mercedes had performed significantly better in race trim than they had in the preceding disappointing practice and qualifying sessions. Whenever we had bad qualifying this year, other than Silverstone for me, we kind of made those places up for the first two or three laps, he noted. Even though quali qualifying down in P6, 7, 8, it probably hasn't compromised us that much when you look at the race picture and how things panned out. But for sure, you want to have a slightly better morale on Saturday night, he admitted, saying you preferred the feeling in Hungary to last night in Spa, which was described as a kick in the teeth for the team. When I compare Saturday night in Hungary compared to Saturday night last night, it is definitely quite a different feeling ahead of the race, he agreed. So when it comes to all this, guys, I honestly think when it comes to the next Grand Prix, it is going to be very, very interesting. Obviously, a lot of the F1 teams are in a bit of a scramble when it comes to what happened with the whole Lewis Hamilton incident. So obviously, you know, that is really tough to see from both sides. So guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. I did want to say guys we are so close to 1000 subscribers so thank you so much really do appreciate all the love and support so let me know down in the comments what you thought what do you think of the belgian grand prix who you think is going to win the next grand prix and uh yeah guys i'll see you soon peace